Hello and welcome back to today's video edition. We're going to talk about an interesting topic today, which is especially very important for those who have recently joined a new organization. So maybe you are a fresher or maybe you are an experienced campaigner. This holds true for either of the two. So what do we do when we join a new organization? It's a question that is seldom answered because most of the times we go through an induction program, but that is what the organization does for you. What is it that you need to do to set yourself apart and ensure that you have a smooth sale in the new organization? So I'm going to talk about five such things which will make it really, really simple for you and will help you chart your path in the organization. So here are the five things. Number one, when you join a new organization, it is important for you to know what are the rules and regulations of the organization. We call them the policies of the company. Every organization has its own policies, has its own rules and regulations. So it's important to know that. Now, why do you know these rules and regulations? Of course, because you want to avoid making any mistakes even unintentionally. So make sure that you're aware about the rules, the policies that the organization has set for its employees. Often you'll find that on the organizational intranet, or sometimes you have to talk to the human resource team in the organization to understand the rules and regulations. It is always better to have a printed copy of the same as well, so that you can refer to them as and when required. So although it's a point which is very obvious, a lot of people do not do this and then find themselves in a lot of trouble later. So go through the organization policies, understand the rules, and then you can breathe easily. That's number one. Number two, and I think a lot of people do not try to do this, and hence I want to talk more about this. It's about getting to know the culture of your company. Now, what exactly is culture? Culture is how people in an organization behave, how do they interact with each other, the style of functioning, the style of working, all of that. So the way people work in an organization defines the culture, defines how do they deal with each other. So some cultures are open culture where people call each other by a first name. They tend to get along with each other in a very, very informal or semi-formal way, whereas some cultures are extremely formal in nature as well. So what is the culture of your organization? Now, you may come from an organization where you had a closed culture and you may land in an organization with a very open culture. Now, you cannot carry forward the same culture as in your previous organization, right? So it's important to know what is the culture, what is the predominant style of working or functioning in the new organization. Sometimes even the convention of calling someone by their first name could make a huge difference on how you interact with each other. So get to know more about that. How do you get to know more about it? Talk to people around you. Get to understand what do they think about the culture of the organization. Perhaps you can also, again, contact the learning and development team, the HR team in the organization, so that you have a bird's view of how the culture in the organization has shaped up. So that's something which is very, very essential, but uh, often people ignore that. So don't do that. Please get to know the culture. Number three, understand how your business makes money. Okay, now any business survives only because it makes money. It has to make profits. Otherwise, survival in the long run becomes difficult. So it's important for you to know how does your business make money? If it is selling a product, if it is offering services, what are some of the costs? What is the profit that is left? How do we go about this? Now, also important to know the products or services and services, whatever the case might be. Some companies offer both products and services. Some companies purely offer products or services. So as the case might be, get to know more about the products, the services of your organization. The reason this is important is because you are going to be a part of this large machinery. And therefore, you've got to know what is my company offering to the world? What difference are we making as a business entity? Now, often people think that only when you join a sales team or a business development team, you need to know about the products or services, which I think is a very, very myopic approach. Irrespective of whichever team you join, you need to know what are the major product categories of your company or the major service offerings that your company has to offer to its clients and other people. So get to know more about it so that you are well-placed in the organization. Number four. Spend time with essential stakeholders. Now, there are multiple stakeholders in an organization, but I would like to suggest three very important key stakeholders with whom you need to spend time. Number one is your own reporting manager. So on day one, day two, whenever you happen to meet your manager at the workplace, understand from him or her what are the expectations that 
he or she has from you. Also, their style of functioning. How do they prefer working? It's important to invest that time with your manager because that helps you set the tone of work while you are getting into this new environment. So spending quality time with your manager, even if it is 10, 15 minutes, that's a good start because it allows you an opportunity to understand the expectations that your manager has from you. Also, things that you should do, should not do within the team that you're going to be a part of. So number one stakeholder is your manager. Number two are your peers, your team members, because you're going to spend a lot of time. Perhaps you might spend more time with them as compared to your own family. So it's important to know who they are. Yeah, Get to know them, understand their names, spend time with them. Perhaps it's a good idea to talk to them over a cup of tea or coffee, have lunch with them as the case might be. Whatever it is, get to know more about the team environment, get to know more about the people with whom you're going to spend quality time at the workplace. Peers will make it easier for you to get more knowledge about the organization and get yourself acquainted with the overall culture of the company as well. Number three, visit your clients. Now, you might either have internal clients or you may have external clients. If you have internal clients, it's a lot more easier. You can just walk up to them and talk to them or perhaps as I suggested, over a cup of tea or coffee or during lunch, you can meet up with them, get to know more about them. But if you have external clients, especially if you're a part of the sales team or the business development team, you will have external clients. What do you do in such scenario? Whenever your colleagues go for a client meeting, request them if you can tag along. Sometimes initially just attending meetings and observing things can help you calm down your own nerves. That preps you up so that when you start going to meetings on an individual basis, you are well rehearsed for the entire scenario. So spend quality time with your clients as well. Introduce yourself, get to know who they are, what were their expectations, what has been their experience working with the company, so on and so forth. So very, very important that you spend time with your clients, whether internal or external. So those are three important stakeholders, your manager, your peers, and your clients. Last but not the least, number five thing that you need to do while you're in an organization is to find a mentor for yourself. Now, sometimes a mentor may be called a buddy. Sometimes a mentor might act like a coach, but in generic sense, you need to find someone who will showcase you the right direction, who will tell you what to do, when to do, how to do, what not to do, so on and so forth. So it's important to have someone who will help you navigate your path while you are in the organization. This is especially true for the first six months that you spend in a company because you are completely new to the environment. Even if you're experienced, you are new to this organization. And therefore, navigating your path requires some kind of hand-holding and support. So the mentor will help you understand the nitty-gritties of operating in the environment. So those are the five things that you must do, according to me. Are these the only things? Not really. There are many more, but I think these are five critical elements that you must focus on. Here they are once again. Number one, understand the policies, rules, and regulations of the organization. Number two, get to know the culture of your company. What kind of culture am I going to be a part of? Number three, understand the business of your organization. How do we make profits? What products or services do we sell? And what are the margins that we make out of them? Number four, spend quality time with key stakeholders, which includes your immediate reporting manager, your peers, and of course, your clients. And number five, you have to find a mentor, someone who will help you find the right direction of working in the new organization. If you do these five things, it will become much more easier for you to spend your time in the organization and ensure that you have a smooth sail as you get to know more about the organization. So, Try these and let me know how do these things work for you. I'm sure they will keep you in good stead. I wish you all the very best.